So here's a radio that was dropped off by a customer. It's actually not his, belongs to a friend of his. Uh, doesn't want to spend a lot of money on this because, of course, it's just, ah, look out, camera. Uh, of course, it's just a standard Cobra 29. I mean, it is the, the night watch, but, you know, it's not a really uh, ultra expensive radio, so it's not like it's a sideband radio. Um, and he's not an avid CB, or he just likes to have a CB in his pickup truck. And he now has no sound. So apparently, um, and I did verify that, that's the only thing I've done so far, I haven't pulled the covers off, but I did did plug it in, hook it up to an antenna, um, hooked up a microphone, because you have to remember with uh, a lot of radios, you have to have a microphone plugged in, or have the to have the receive pin shorted out so you can actually get your audio out to the speaker. Um, but that's actually a very common fault in radios, and it can be caused by many things, not having audio. Now, the first thing to check is, actually, let me switch my dummy load, or switch over from antenna to dummy load. So the first thing we want to do is turn it on. No pop noise. So nothing came out of the speaker. Anytime you turn a radio on like this, usually you'll hear a little pop, just not, not extremely loud, but you'll get something out of the speaker. There's the volume cranked up the entire way, nothing. So, next thing we want to check is, because a lot of radios use the audio amplifier, uh, not just in the, you know, your receive audio for amplifying the signal for the speaker, but it's also used in transmit. So, it's actually amplifying your voice coming out of the microphone. So, that's the next thing to do. We'll grab the mic it and I'm not audio audio yep actually yes we do have we do have modulation we can see the needle moving there and I'm looking over at my external watt meter which I have in peak mode so yeah I can see yes we definitely have we have swing so that right there tells me that the audio amplifier circuits fine the microphone ampli microphone amplifier circuit wouldn't have anything to do with the receive audio but it tells me that we're really not having an audio circuit problem most likely it's going to be something else uh could be a bad connection at the external speaker jack on the back um could be a bad speaker that's very common uh, you have to remember these radios are built to a price point the speakers they use in radios like this they're very cheap all cb radios they're just cheap speakers so it's not uncommon for them to go bad uh, especially this radio is being used in a mo in you know it's a mobile radio, but it's being used what it's being used in the environment it's meant to be used in mobile. Well, the only problem with stuff being in a mobile environment is it's outside, so it goes through temperatures huge temperature swings, summer, winter, you know, day, nighttime, high humidity, low humidity, and I think humidity is probably what kills a lot of speakers. Um, so. Very likely it could be the internal speaker. So the easiest way to check that is just use an external speaker. There's a jack on the back. So if you have an external speaker, just plug it in. If you look on the back side here, you can see there's two connections. Get the light just right. One's PA and one says external speaker. So we'll plug into the external speaker jack. And again, we'll turn the volume up. Uh, let me flip back over to an antenna. There. Well, we had sound. So, I'm going to say bad speaker. So let's... Man, this thing has a tight mic jack. It's almost like there's a burr on the inside of this thing. I couldn't get that mic jack in at all, almost, when I first tried. So let me get the, uh, get the camera up and out of my way a little bit here. Take the bottom cover off. So, you know, there's untold numbers of what I call beater radios, and this is, you know... That's actually your standard radios. You know, most people don't have the high dollar radios. They just have something like this. They just want a CB, nothing fancy. They want to be able to hear and talk. So there's lots of radios out there like this. Okay, 
Now we got her cracked open here. So the first thing we want to check is the speaker attached. Yes, both wires are firmly soldered down there. Give a slight tug to these two. They look fine. So let's really quick just hook this back up. The antenna back up. Plug our microphone back in. If I can get it jammed in this tight socket. Okay, no sound. If I plug in the external speaker, we'll just verify again. So, yep, we have sound. And unplug it, and we don't. So, if you've ever dismantled anything electronic that had a speaker in it, <laughs> I'm hoping you saved your speaker, didn't you? Because you never know when you might need one. Well, this is a perfect time to just have a little speaker that came out of Lord knows what doesn't even need to be the exact impedance as what might be in the radio. Uh, pretty much the majority, not all, but the majority of uh, especially solid state radios are going to have an 8 ohm speaker. If you stick in a, now well, this, this happens to be an 8 ohm speaker, but if you stick in a 4 ohm, a 2 ohm, a 16 ohm, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to kill the, the audio amplifier just to hook it up for a couple seconds. You're not going to damage anything. You just really want to quickly verify whether you actually have audio coming here. You know, And I'm assuming you might not have something like an oscilloscope that you can hook up and actually see if the, the, the signal's getting here. So really all you need is a speaker. So we'll just take our little speaker there, just hold one wire on here. And there you go. So that's all it is. Just that simple. That's all, that's all the more complicated troubleshooting needs to be in many cases. Uh, the only thing I had for troubleshooting or test equipment was another little speaker. So that's all this, that's all this radio needs. Very simple repair. It's going to be very cheap. Take out four screws, put in a new speaker, solder the two wires on, job done. Uh, like I say, it's just a normal everyday, what I call user-grade radio. Uh, so he doesn't even want an alignment done to this. I can see it is still factory. Cores are still sealed. Oh no, this has been worked on. This is not a factory radio. This has a super swing kit. I see a capacitor bodged in back here. So yeah, this has had something done to it. But it doesn't look like anything was ever adjusted. So yeah, it looks like somebody did this, did their swing mod. Uh, Everything else looks intact, but yeah, so it has had some work done to it. But point being, when you're doing troubleshooting, it doesn't always require, a lot of times it doesn't even require a meter, not even a simple, you know, volt ohm meter, you know, multimeter. Just use what you have. Any speaker, and it doesn't need to be a small one like this. You could take a bookshelf speaker from your stereo. Again, most of those common impedance on those just like these eight ohms but even if they're two four eight or 16 ohms doesn't ma doesn't matter just to really quick just attach the two wires here and see if you have sound so you know if you have a bookshelf speaker for you know, like your iHome or your stereo system or something you could very simply use that so there you go just a really fast video on troubleshooting a very simple problem no receive audio and there you go